everyone welcome back to the channel today i am explaining hexadecimal color which is a way to represent color and it's used in web design digital media things like that so if you're into design in any way shape or form knowing how this works is beneficial to you so to do that i'm going to go through seven slides uh, covering bits pixels bit depth primary colors of light not pigment uh, channels and then we'll look at 8 16 and 24 bit colors and then finally we'll jump into the actual notation so let's get started the first thing to talk about is bits so briefly bits are binary digits and it just really means a one or a zero they are the smallest amount of information in a computer and they take two states zero or one and the zero can represent the number zero, uh, none, no, false, off, things like that, a negative in some way. And then one is the opposite. So it represents a positive somehow, uh, either the number one, something, or uh, compared to nothing, yes, true, or on. And when you have eight bits together, that's known as a byte, which is a single unit of memory. So pixels, you probably have heard this when you shop for a computer and you get a laptop and the display references pixels in some way. Uh, but pixels is derived from uh, the word picture, more specifically pictures or pix or P-I-X and elements. So the individual elements of a picture, which is the smallest, tiniest piece of a picture that you can get. And so in a digital image, it's typically a very, very small square, although it doesn't have to be square. Um, but it is the smallest part of an image that you can represent. So the next thing is bit depth. So uh, this is the number of bits that are used to define the value of each pixel. So pixels can be defined in a number of ways. And this is why we have all these different systems. But um, here, remember that bits can be either zero or one. And the number of bits that you have defining that pixel value uh, relates to its, its, uh, its sophistication, its complication. So the more bits you have, the, the more complicated your value of your pixel can be. And that gives you more detail. So uh, very quickly, if we have uh, only two bits that are used to define the value of our pixel that only gives us zero or one in the first uh, bit and zero or one in the second. And so together that gives us two to the two or four. So we have two representing the zero or one. Those are our two states raised to the n power where n is the number of bits. And then if you have four bits, you can do more with it. So two to the four is 16. So that would give you 16 different color options. Now, in this case, we're only talking about uh, grayscale. So we'll look quickly at color in a moment, and then we'll see how those different channels come into play. So uh, before we get into that, it's important to cover primary colors. So if you've done any pigment-based artistic work with paints, crayons, things like that, uh, you'll be familiar with red, yellow, and blue as the primary colors. But that's not how it works for light. So with digital images on your computer or your phone, we have to look at the primary colors of light, and they're different than the primary colors of pigment. So with light, the primaries are red, green, and blue, often referred to in that order. So we have an RGB color system. And if you look in this list, you'll see that red plus green will give you yellow. Red plus blue will give you magenta. And then green plus blue will give you cyan. And so yellow, you're familiar with. Magenta is kind of a pink color. And cyan is sort of a sky blue color. And then if you take all of those colors, red, green, and blue together in equal amounts, you get white light. And the absence of all of those colors is black. And we'll see references to that in the hex system that we'll see at the end. So color channels. Remember when I was talking about bits and values, 
we only had a few bits and we only had a few values that you could do with that. Um, but now that we know there are three different colors used as primaries that build together to make a composite color, we can think about representing each one of those colors independently. So we would have three different color channels or a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. So each one of those channels will use a number of bits. And again, the more bits you have in that channel, the more sophisticated that color can be. And so that's the take home rule here. More bits equals more colors. So let's look at eight, 16 and 24 bit color systems. So uh, with popular media, this would have been uh, very common in marketing and in the media in, in relationship to video game consoles. So um, the earliest home systems, the earliest home consoles used 8-bit color. And so this would have been like the Nintendo Entertainment System, which was very popular in the 80s. And it had a maximum of 256 colors. So that would be two raised to the number of bits power. So that's two to the eight, which is 256 colors. And if you look at this image um, over here at the top, you can see that um, now this is not from a Nintendo game. This is from another console, but the colors are very flat, very few, uh, not very detailed. And you sort of had to use your imagination a lot more with, with games like that. Um, and, Interestingly, if you look at the graphic with the red, green, and blue blocks representing the, the bits, uh, there are three red, three green, and two blue. So you cannot equally represent each color in that system. So a decision had to be made uh, with respect to which one was left out. So uh, in many cases, blue was left out because our eyes are more sensitive to green uh, and red made things look better, I guess. So um, it was not an equally distributed amount of information for each color channel. And then later, 16-bit color systems came out. So that would be something like the Super Nintendo or SNES. And these were 16-bit um, systems as they were marketed in the media. So 16-bit was a, was a thing that was played up to the uh, consumers. And 16 is better than 8. But you didn't really necessarily know what that was. But uh, they hyped up the ability of these systems to render more colors. And therefore, they were more realistic and more engaging. Uh, but what we see with the math is that 2 to the 16 gives us over 65,000 colors, which is massively improved from 256 colors. And in the second image, you can see there's a bit more shadowing and depth and more interest. And uh, again, though, we see that the pixels are not, um, well, the colors are not equally represented in each pixel. So we have uh, more green than red or blue, again, because our eyes are more sensitive to that band of wavelengths. And then more recently, and continuing into uh, contemporary times, we have 24-bit systems, which are often uh, referred to as true color. And two to the 24 gives us over 16 million colors, which, as I understand it, is more than the human eye can detect. Uh, and so we have more than is necessary for our eyes. There are some systems, however, that use even more information to compute each pixel. Uh, so there's some other things going on that I'm not talking about um, in, in terms of the computations, but with respect to the output and the colors that are possible, the system starting with the N64 and, and that generation really brought in this true color wave and the ability to render millions of colors. And, uh, you know, some of the graphics these days are just, you know, absolutely fantastic. Uh, but here we see 2 to the 24, which gives us a lot of information. We also see that the red, green, and blue channels are equally distributed, or at least they can be. And then uh, there's another thing here that uh, sometimes the computations are done with 32 bits per pixel because there's an added channel for transparency called alpha. So this alpha channel is included with RGB. So you have maybe an RGBA system, uh, which also allows you to give the illusion of depth or, or maybe um, objects in front of one another with this transparency. So the graphics 
in modern game consoles and, and other digital media far surpasses uh, the 16-bit and definitely the 8-bit systems. So hexadecimal notation. Uh, to understand this, first understand that most of the math that you use is base 10. So uh, there are 10 individual digits that can be used to do those calculations, starting with zero up through nine, and then various combinations of those to do whatever calculations. Base 16, however, uses 16. So zero through nine, as before, with the addition of A, B, C, D, E, and F symbols. So they're not really numbers in the, in the way that the others are, but let's just say 16 symbols in this system. And uh, the, the reason why this is important is that it is hard to write 16 uh, or 24, sorry, uh, ones and zeros for a color. Let's say you had a red, green, and blue channel, each with eight bits. You need to write zeros and ones 24 times to get the color that you want. But that's a bit much. So uh, what this system allows is compression of that uh, 24 long string of numbers down to six. And so by compressing these values into a shorter form, it's much easier to write and store. So uh, in my example here, I have eight red zeros, uh, eight green ones, and eight blue ones. So that would be zeros, ones, and ones. And in the hexadecimal, hexadecimal form, it's two zeros, two Fs, and two Fs, independently representing the red, green, and blue channels. And so that combination, zero, zero, F, 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 would be zero red component, and then a full contribution from both the green and blue channels, which would give you the cyan color that results from the combination of green and blue at their maximum. And so with this system, with six digits, you can represent 256 to the third colors, which is, you know, over 16 million colors. And uh, it, it requires very little in terms of writing. And in web design, uh, you'll often see like an HTML code, you'll often see colors written in this way uh, with the addition of a hashtag or pound sign in front of them. So uh, if you ever do anything with color in a digital medium, this is where you'll see that most frequently. So that brings us to the end. I hope you learned something interesting about hexadecimal notation. Take care. Have a great week.